get any questions? Well, uh, since the last time we talked, obviously, uh, long flight home Saturday, Sunday um, was it was a tough day. I think uh, the good news was that a lot of our guys obviously were very disappointed. Good players, coaches, uh, support staff um, played the number one team in the country. Those things got to uh, come about, in a, a, you know, not just obviously the way we played to get to where we were, but obviously the way they played and to get that chance. Uh, those don't come around very often. I had a, had a handful of them during my coaching career. Would love to capitalize on it better. Didn't love. Uh, the first half, obviously, but uh, going back and reviewing the film, um, there were some things that went sideways early on, things that I think we could correct and, and put ourselves in a better position, but uh, uh, obviously uh, um, not where we wanted to be. So Sunday needed to be a really big day. Um, had about two and a half hours of learning uh, for our coaches, with our coaches and our players. Uh, as a staff, we went through it repeatedly uh, during the day, but uh, kind of had to turn the page Sunday night to jump into our Minnesota preparation, a team that's won three games in a row, uh, a team that um, you know, it's played very well down the stretch here. We know who Minnesota is, what they're all about. Um, another rematch game for us, so it's, a, it's another great opportunity for us to uh, get where we need to be. I think it was important to tell our guys, listen, the disappointment is real. you got to be able to own it, um, being able to uh, grow from it. Um, uh, but I, I do think that uh, there's still a lot of positives that we've accomplished. can't take those away from us. A lot of good things ahead of us in the future. So um, with that, uh, I'll give you a couple injury updates. Um, so. Uh, all the guys that left the game, unfortunately, a lot of them were in the DB position. So Torrey Cox has already begun to uh, pass his uh, uh, initial um, uh, protocol and is on track to be able to practice by uh, somewhat capacity tomorrow, but should be good to go uh, by Wednesday, Thursday. Same thing, Pat Bryant, uh, also in the DB room, uh, Terrence Brooks and, and Caleb Patterson. Uh, some soft tissue, lower leg injuries, but I do think we'll have those guys, um, if not Tuesday, Wednesday for practice. Uh, Joe Barna, um, uh, again, was a injury late in the game to the shoulder, but uh, uh, should, I think, be, be ready to go by Saturday. Um, nothing long-term for him. And then Tyler Strain probably would be the one that's uh, uh, the most in question for Saturday. Um, but uh, I think he's very positive. I saw him bounce through the facility this morning earlier today. So know a lot more Tuesday, Wednesday. And then when I talk with you guys on Thursday, I should have a better perspective. But a lot uh, a lot of positives. I had to call my wife and tell her that. I knew she was very relieved in that. Uh, uh, so. Uh, I think perspective is always awesome, right? Like um, uh, we get back late Saturday night, obviously uh, my kids are in bed. Um, uh, we get home and um, you know, when when, uh, <clears throat> when you wake up in the morning for at least my house, we got the, the kids on video and uh, my oldest woke up first. She came down, gave me a huge hug and, and my little one uh, woke up and she's had a loose tooth and I am the local uh, expert uh, at pulling tea. So she was very excited to know that dad was home on Sunday morning. So uh, to put a perspective to uh, pull my youngest uh, bottom front tooth and, and and make the whole world know that it's going to go forward, right? There was a lot of disappointment in Saturday, but to, to know that Sunday is another day, another opportunity um, this week to play Minnesota. Uh, I did take a lot of pride, to be quite honest, and simple thing my wife reminded me was, um, she said, you, on Sunday, I'll leave it to work. She said, you think we'll be ranked? I said, you know, I don't know. Um, that's not my hand. Uh, obviously, I don't pay a lot of attention to that, but what I have learned since being here in an environment when my first job we were running literally every week every week upon the week you just became used to it when i was at arkansas i realized the effect it had on our program when we got ranked and then this year uh, to have seven straight weeks of us being ranked first time that's been done in 22 years 23 years uh, i realized how far we've gone there's a lot of great disappointment um but to play the number one team in the country and to, and to know that illinois had a chance uh to be on that stage and obviously uh, do a lot of things that uh, showed we got a lot of work to do but to be in that voice to be in that conversation um uh, you know, next week, I think when the college football playoffs come off, right, like we got a, a chance uh, in, uh, to set ourselves in a position uh, this week against Minnesota. And obviously, just like everybody else, with the remaining five weeks of the year, we got four weeks to play to do a lot of really good things. And our, our program has grown a lot. Um, the same crowd that was out there at Michigan that affected that program or that game in, in itself, I, I, it was literally the first game that I felt I had been a part of on a big stage that that, that game was affected by the crowd, right, to have that. Um, so whatever we gotta do, 11 o'clock, whatever Illinois fans are gonna show up, um, uh, I hope you be there, be loud, right? Um, just means you got a 11 a.m. kickoff, you gotta get that first uh, beverage, whether it's a coffee, a mimosa, a bloody, a Red Bull, whatever you got going, man, just get up and get it going uh, and get here and get seated by about 10.30 and uh, get get ready to play a, and, or get be ready to be a part of a really good Big Ten football environment. I think it would be pretty awesome. So uh, with that, open it up for uh, questions. Coach, what are some typical things you can expect playing a team coached by P.J. Fleck? Uh, what can I expect from Minnesota? Yes. Just, well, uh, obviously, PJ's record speaks for itself. Um, I think his bowl record is unbelievable, right? Like, just to, to have that many 
consecutive A to get in those bowls, but also to play them and win them. Uh, PJ's teams always get better, in my opinion. He's a very detail oriented coach. Um, he's a guy during my time here at Illinois, he and I've uh, uh, shared a lot of uh, uh, times on the field, but also, you know, just a guy that I really personally enjoy, who he is, what he, what he stands for. Uh, I think people would agree that, like I've always kind of said when we play this game, we're kind of complete opposites, but that's probably why we uh, get along halfway decent. I think his, uh, his approach to detail, his football fundamentals, um, one thing that's been impressive, right? So he had changeover and turnover at his coordinators, but they're really kind of the same Minnesota. He continues to hire each coordinator, kind of has a flavor of their own, but uh, especially when I was watching their special teams, right? Just another really good example of a, uh, of a well-coached football team in all three phases. Brett, with Pat in particular, is he a guy because of volume of reps he's had in his career? Not uh, Brian. Yeah, but he, if you were cleared on to practice Wednesday, if those That's a very good point. But yeah, I think the more, and this is probably coach driven, not player driven. I think the coaches, you know, need to have assurance that what they see during the week is what you see on Saturday. Um, and there was actually a, 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 an example of this earlier this year uh, for a player that really would, uh, will remain disclosed at this time as well. But a guy that came in on Sunday and just was feeling a little bit different than when he finished the game. It was a game that we had won. Everybody's feeling good, and I kind of got that call on Sunday, and I'm like, really, you know? And then uh, wasn't able to practice Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Maybe got a little bit of limited walkthrough on Thursday and Friday, and went out and played probably the best game of his career on, on Saturday. But he's a multi-year starter, right? So I think there is that level, especially with Pat. And to be honest, um, you know, I feel fairly confident, Pat. I mean, he, he literally told me yesterday there's not a chance he's not playing in this game. But I said, unless you stayed at Holiday Inn Express last night and got a doctorate degree I didn't aware of, you don't get to make that call, right? Uh, but he uh, uh, assured me he's going to play, but for us, if someone can't play, like one of the balancing acts you got to have as a coach, if you have someone that you feel confident about, you could play them with limited reps, it actually is beneficial to rep the guys that can play in his place, right? So uh, for a guy like Pat Bryant, right, if, if he can't really go until Wednesday, Thursday, full go, uh, the value of having Malik Elzey, Alex Kapka jones uh, 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 Hank Bate, like all those guys that are going to fill into that, that void has been really good. Defensively, mm -hmm. takeaways have been such a big part and yeah. helped. But what do you feel like you guys, identity-wise, can do? If, if maybe those aren't coming in, in bunches like we've seen. Well, we can't give up big plays, right? Like uh, you know, I know. Um, I remember one stat. I think I saw. I think I saw uh, uh, in the Oregon Ohio State game. I think I think Ohio State had given up. I believe eight plays of over 25 yards. Over 20 yards was a pretty staggering number that um, come out of it. And you know, that's going into our our. our Game plan, obviously, we didn't hold true to that in certain regards defensively in the second half, a little different, but there was just too many free yardage in that first half. And if you go back to really the two worst Purdue, the two worst halves of the season for us defensively have been the second half of Purdue and the first half of Oregon, um, both kind of uniquely different, uh, but both of them were victims of big plays, right? And I think that, that has to be a, 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 a very resounding um, effort by our defense, not only in our game plan, but also our game schemes and also our players that we just have to minimize the big play opportunities. You have to make them earn everything. Brett, what has maybe Aiden Lawfrey stacking some healthy weeks yeah. after another maybe done for him and for the run game? Well, I just think our guys have a lot of confidence. There's a reason Aiden Lawfrey started the first half against Eastern Illinois you know, from last spring through the summer, through fall camp. He had been our most consistent, steady performer, a, a guy that uh, brings his lunch pail to work every day, uh, goes to work, an awesome mom and dad from Gibson City who just kind of embody and embolize. Uh, 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 everything what we want about this program and, and on top of that he's very quick he's very talented so um he had a couple you know it was kind of uh, probably one of the most defeating parts of of sunday or saturday's game sunday's film analysis is to see those two first big runs or two big plays it's 14 14 nothing it's not where you want to be but we have two good things then we gave up a you know then we had a, a turnover and that kind of deflated those two those two or three good runs that we had so uh, I want to make sure that we run the ball consistently. I think to, to win games in the Big Ten, you got to run the ball, defend the run, and cover kicks. And obviously, we had time to have been able to do that, but he's got to be a big part of it. Brett, what's, what's a big reason you guys are yeah. as been as successful as you've been? What are the points of emphasis at their game that, that I think you have? Yeah, I think first off, get, you know, I asked Barry, I asked all the coaches, but in this case, right, it's Barry and, and Luke specifically, right, to, to have a good conversation on Sunday. What, what maybe Luke was uh, trying to tell us. Uh, that we didn't hear, right, or that we didn't see. And, and I think Barry had some really good answers last night that I thought were really good. Um, uh, listen, I, I think you guys know me well enough. I talk about communication a lot, right? And communication is a two-way street. You gotta be able to speak it, they gotta be able to hear it, and then vice versa, when they're telling you things, even verbally or non-verbally, you gotta be able to understand it and hear it. And, uh, you know, I just think that Luke has got so much respect, not only in the players' locker room, but in the coaches' uh, meeting rooms, right? Just 
what he says carries a lot of weight, and, and I think because of that, we have to be very, very um, uh, conscientious of what he's trying to tell us during the course of the week. No, because then that would be obviously. <laughs> but but I would just tell you that like communication is is really good, right? There are certain things that Luke does very very well, and certain things that he sees well can make quick decisions on, and and if not, then things get crowded and gray, and that's when it doesn't go well. So um, the thing that I would give you, you know, I mean, uh, not tipping off anything, he's going to be. Uh, put on a list here this week that is going to be very, very uh, uh, rewarding for what he's done, right? Um, another defensive player, the same thing. The good news is, I think going into the year, we had players that we thought were good, and now other people are recognizing that. Um, but Luke himself, one of the greatest traits you're going to have as a quarterback, in my opinion, you know, during the course of the game, those that can make something of nothing are, are a little bit different, right? But the ones that can recognize and adjust either prior or post game to what makes them better next week are truly the great ones, are truly the ones that, that, that you can build off of and get better. And, and what I've learned from Luke this year is he truly possesses that quality, which a year ago I didn't know that there, uh, but now I know it more than ever. As you know, the rankings don't matter to you, mm-hmm. but it sounds like you maybe were a little bit surprised you were still in there. Yeah, right? yeah, great point. I'm sorry, I didn't finish it. Um, my wife said, I said, I didn't know, right? And she goes, what do you mean? She goes, you've got two losses against two teams that are one and three and never lost a game and you played them both at their place, right? And so I probably need to listen to my wife more often, right? But I, I kind of like, kind of laughed and turned around, but I mean, not, no way am I, you know, I own those two losses and where it is, but I do think there's probably a national, I know you get a vote, right? But right. Uh, but I, I think, think from the outside good. world, two years ago, that's just an Illinois program that gets booted out, right? And and I think uh, for us, even though it stayed in there 24, like, like, I think it just speaks volumes about what the outside world is seeing. I know I get it more from our coaches, right, that I travel around, see around, um, people that give me feedback, people that know football. When I see and meet with the commentators, it's just like there's a difference, right? And to be, to be ranked seven weeks, like, I don't care what everybody says, right? And it's, it's the last time that happened is 2001. Perception is changing. We can't change it overnight, right? Um, it, it's very interesting for me to watch college football. I think there's more parity right now than ever before. Parity is awesome from Illinois, right? Like, like. The more we can get on the, the same playing field, and, and I hope the heck this uh, 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 revenue share goes forward. And if we're all dealing, you know, with the same NIL from you know whatever it is, if, if I can handle being within a couple million of each other. It's crazy to say, right? But like last year, we were at two million, and the team we competed again was at twenty million. Like that's not that's not apples and oranges, right? Or how we want to say it. Like like it's just it's not comparable, right? And if we can all get on the same playing field, I love to do what I love to do, um, but you put me on the same playing field, give me the same rules, and we'll play our ass every day, right? And that's just, I know that to be true, right? And um, that's what I get excited about, because our guys are understanding that they can play with anybody. The, the only thing that I told our team that I really, um, I want to make sure that we eradicate from our program is on that plane ride over and the walkthrough on Thursday, well, uh, the, the walkthrough on Friday, the, the, the pregame on Saturday, like, I really felt those guys felt they could go out there and win that football game. And they started that way. And then when we got punched a little bit, like I think there wasn't anybody that like, you could just sit to a whole group, but I think there was enough people that showed up that were like, maybe they don't quite know if we can have this moment, right? And and that opponent will find, Oregon will find that person, right? And you know, we, we had enough things go wrong offensively, enough things go wrong defensively. Special teams was actually pretty solid. Um, we wanted, Start off the game putting their returner, who's a great returner on the on the opening kickoff inside the twenty. Like you can't like, and then the thing that I get frustrated with on our first defensive drive, we get a third and seven and a third and six. You can't get it any better than that. To have Oregon off schedule and and they convert it, and that second one was a third and six that converts for a touchdown. It goes all the way across the field. Like we can't have that, right? And then you know I was upset. Like we gave you know first down, right? It sounds silly, right? But I, Luke Altmaier was not down on the second play, right? So now. Instead of a third and five, we got a third and 15. We can't control that, can't control the grab the face mask. It is what it is, right? And then that, when you start one possession, right, and then you give up two uh, uh, scores, it's just hard. And then that third one is 14-14. We throw the shot play and, and get a pick. Like, that probably was almost a point where it's like it's too much. The number one team is it's hard to come over that. That's why at halftime I'm like, let's reset. We're starting because I wanted them to understand they can play winning football on the road, right? And uh, you know, we've had three tough venues, Nebraska, we had success, Penn State, moderate success, and then, and then Oregon was, was obviously minimal success, especially in the first half. So uh, we're, a, we're a program that's on the rise. It's a program that's building, and we're going to get better every opportunity. I promise you, 
we got better from Saturday night till today, uh, and we'll get better this week. Right. In terms of Luke, um, is the communication where you've seen him the most development out of him from last year to this year? Because he's talked to us a lot about trying to deal with failure and adversity a lot better yeah. internally for him, but it almost seems like he, he's communicating with you a heck of a lot more than he was before. Oh, 100%. Yeah, 100%. I think that's just part of the world that we're in, this, product, uh, this, this portal world, right? Like, um, listen, uh, uh, Melvin Priestley probably played his best game on Saturday, to be honest, um, against some some really good opponents, right? So he's a portal guy, and I'm probably communicating with Melvin Priestley better than I ever have in his lifetime, right? Um, he fell off his tricycle last week, bruised his butt, right? And we had a nice conversation about a bruised ass, which I, I think was very comical, right? But, like, like I think the part that really uh, – that, that I think as coaches we constantly evolve to is it's a different world, right? You're going to have these players come in and, and play immediately in your program, and you have to develop – that's why I, I tell all our coaches every day, every day in your building, you're either building or tearing down a relationship, whether, you, whether you're consciously doing it or not. When you, when you pass them in the hallway, the way you correct them, the way you teach them, the way you talk to them, a coach that bridges the gap to the other side of the ball, like we're building communication. But for sure, Luke, um, Luke is not an, I mean, he's just not natural uh, go in, take over a room, but he can um, when he's confident, right? And he's got a great voice. Um, he is so intelligent. I love meeting with him. I meet with the quarterbacks twice a week, just me and the quarterbacks with, with Art Barry's in for one of the meetings. And just to have that meeting, the reason I really wanted to increase it this year was I wanted more communication between the one. I want them to feel. I always come in. I usually go get a steam or workout and come in sweaty with a towel around my neck, kick my feet up because I want them to be relaxed. I don't want them to see me as, as the head coach that they, 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 they reserve to talk to themselves to. So just a little bridge building there I think goes a long way. Right. Did you get any clarity from targeting call the big ten and if so could you yeah great question um and again i'm not this isn't like i get it i get it um but uh you know pat's obviously in concussion protocol everything's turning in the right way there and and, and it's taking himself and, and put himself as far as he could be right now it's a it's a five-day process but everything indicates going to be there um obviously i watched the film after the game Saturday night flying home and then Sunday. Um, and so what we routinely do is send in, you know, X number of plays. That was one of the plays I sent in. And I just, I want, I, okay, if they told me it's not, I want to know who made that decision and how, right? Because it clearly shows to me that he was struck in the head uh, with the forearm. And I want to know how it gets reversed. I understand if that wasn't called. I don't understand how it was called and taken away. That That's what I can't. And, and I, I'm, I'm, if I was Pat Bryan, or I got to my phone and Pat Bryan's dad called me, like that's the people I care about answering to. I don't give a about anybody else. I care about answering my players' parents about their safety. And, and I, I wanna know why, but more importantly, I wanna know for us to move forward, if, if that's legal, like like, I don't wanna teach that, but I wanna know the rules that we're playing with. And that, that's, that's the number one reason, you know, we sent in about a half a dozen plays that like just were very concerning for them were player safety related, and I, I gotta have those answers. And along on communication, how do you feel like we talked about protection on Saturday? How do you feel like your line is communicating protection? O line. O line. Sorry. Yeah. yeah um, well, first off, Oregon presents you know a little bit of a unique. They run like uh, the first, um, the third and fifteen. Even though it was a run, they gave a unique look. So they had a line, Mike linebacker, or they had a linebacker walking on scrimmage, which gives like a, a a different front that we treat him as a D lineman. Um, so I think there's there's probably still work to be done there, uh, but on the same account, I think our guys, uh, you know, uh, just not not pre-snap communicate, but some of that stuff's post-snap, right? Like they see one thing and it rocks out, and there's got to be communication within the play, not verbally, but non-verbally, right? To slide and push. So uh, the more we can do and the more we can keep building that, I think simplicity is a good thing, but also just playing with a, playing at 100 miles an hour, uh, I think really helps and. Um, you know, like I said, Melvin played very well. Um, the other four guys were flashes, but not good enough for, for four quarters. Right, I've seen the one more after this, coach 120 players. Yeah. Most got coaches. How do you teach them? Like, how, what's your coaching for coaches? It's you know, probably a good question for them, but I really probably, especially now in the latter part of my career, I would say that I would enjoy coaching the coaches just as much as I do with the players. I don't think I used to say that or do that, but I remember being in my first staff meeting as a head coach. I'm 35 years old, sitting at the front of the table, and, and most of the guys in the room are older than me. Um, and you know, here I am trying to tell them how to coach. Right now, we went 12 and one, did some good things. But um, ever since then, I realized that one of the things that I was hesitant to, hesitant to in my first part of my career is sharing the things that I had been taught to put me in a position I was in. Um, you know, coach. 
Coach Schneider, uh, I go back to like that day when I got named a head coach. Coach Schneider said, hey, you became a head coach today because you're Brett Beal and not because you've been Hayden Fry or, or, or Kirk Ferentz or Bill Snyder or Barry Alvarez, um, now Bill Belichick, right? Like, you are in this position because of who you are. And it took me a while to realize, like, you know, I was taught some really good things along the way and I should regurgitate that. So um, I would say a large portion of my time during the odyssey season and the, and the game week is coaching my coaches on, on how to play the game understand things a lot of times those guys will make comments that I'll say something before it happens and I didn't ever think of it that way that like like uh, right wrong or different it's just it just there's things that you see and you know are coming um, that the more I can educate those guys because someone taught me that as well right um, that, that's a big part of it and I enjoy it it's probably one of the most satisfying parts of my job this rule this year that allowed us to hire all these young coaches like to coach with with you know Grant Kevin, I got so many former players. Um, actually, I have a guy now, uh, Trent Harris, that I coached at the Giants, right, and the Patriots. Like, like a guy I didn't coach in college, I coached on the highest level, and uh, those are very rewarding relationships to build. You talked about turning Last one. the page from Saturday's mm -hmm. game. Is there, can your guys maybe also take a fuel and fire from that loss, or do you want to kind of completely put it in the Yeah, clarification. When I say turn the page, I just mean you can't sit and dwell on what happened yesterday. You have to move forward. But I, I think I've said it a couple times in here, one of our first team – Team goals is remember the past, prepare for the future. So it, it, there, it, it, listen, Oregon isn't going to be left in Oregon. Oregon jumped on the plane with us. You threw it in your backpack or your duffel bag, or you know, for me, I can't let it go out of my head. Um, uh, and really, even Sunday was hard for me to move, right? But I definitely we take a break at 6:15, uh, and I give them an hour dinner break, and and I come back and I specifically turn the page and leave everything from Oregon, you know, XOs, film, and just talk moving forward where we are in college football and then more importantly where we are against Minnesota. I gave keys to victory against Minnesota on Sunday night. Usually I wait till Tuesday morning just because I felt it was going to be a great way for me to show them where we're going. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.